welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem two from Leak Code Contest 76 entitled Minimum Swaps to Make Sequences Increasing. The problem states we have two integer sequences A and B of the same non-zero length. We are allowed to swap elements AI and BI. Note that both elements are in the same index position in their respective sequences. At the end of some number of swaps, A and B are both strictly increasing. Given A and B return the minimum number of swaps to make both sequences strictly increasing, it is guaranteed that the given input always makes it possible. And note that A and B are going to have length of at most 1000 and the values in A and B are going to be between going to be between 0 and 2000. So let's take a look at the example that lead code gave us. So here we have two sequences A and B. A is 1, 3, 5, 4 and B is 1, 2, 3, 7. So the question is asking uh, what's the minimum number of swaps of uh, two elements in uh, you know array A and B that are at the same index that are going to result in A and B being strictly increasing. So strictly increasing is similar to sorted. The only difference being is that adjacent elements can't have the same value. So if we switched uh, 5 and 3, this would result in A being 1, 3, 3, 4, which is technically sorted, but it's not strictly increasing. So that's not going to be a possible solution. Um, and the solution here is going to be switching or swapping uh, the last element in both sequence. So if we swap elements uh, 4 and 7, uh, that's going to give us 1, 3, 5, 7 for A and 1, 2, 3, 4 for B, which are both strictly increasing. And the way we're going to do this is by creating two uh, arrays or vectors, one called no swap and one called swap. And what these uh, values represent is that uh, it's the minimum number of swaps um, up to uh, the given index. Um, given that we are either not swapping at that index i or we are swapping at that index i. So if we ignore the last three elements of a, b, and these two arrays and just look at the first element, what that's saying is that uh, for index 0, if we're not swapping at this index, this is the minimum number of swaps that we need to have a and b uh, strictly increasing. And for swap, uh, it's the minimum number of swaps if we are swapping at index zero. So of course, this is going to be zero for just a one element uh, sequence. And for one swap, it's just going to be one. Uh, and then the way we're going to get our answer is by taking the minimum of these two. So we would take the minimum of this and it would give us zero if we were only looking at the first element. And if we look at the first two elements, we then move to index one, and it's the same thing because these are both strictly increasing. The same thing for uh, index, uh, uh, index two, because if we have one, two, three, and one, three, five, we know these are strictly increasing. However, if we were going to have a swap at index two, uh, this would give us one, three, three, which is not strictly increasing. So we would need at least two swaps in order to have both of them being strictly increasing. And so for our total array, we're going to look at the last element. Uh, we're going to have one and two, and we're taking the minimum. So the answer for uh, the example that Leak Code has given us is going to be one. So let's take a look at how we sort of fill the values of no swap and swap. So we initialize uh, the first element at index zero for no swap to be zero and swap to be one. That was explained previously. So then we are gonna compare elements uh, two at a time. So we'll initialize the values at index one just to be a very large number that's, you know, at minimum the length of the array but uh, some solutions you could, you know, set this to be the maximum possible integer value. Uh, both will work. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to compare the elements next to each other. So if this is i, this is i minus 1, and we compare them. And if i, the value at i is greater than the value at i minus 1 for both a and b, we know that we don't need to swap anything here in order for it to be strictly increasing. So for uh, no swap, we can just set uh, the value at index 1 to be equal to the value at index 0. And for swap, we can set it equal to be the value at uh, index, you know, i minus 1 plus 1. So the reason is because we know this is already in strictly increasing order. And we know if we're looking at, uh, for swap, uh, the value at i minus 1, we performed a swap here. So we would have to perform one more sw swap uh, sort of to reverse that swap to maintain uh, the strictly increasing order. Um, so we have 0 and 2 now. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to compare across sequences. So we're going to compare the elements at uh, i with the elements at i minus 1 for the opposite it sequence. And if these are both also have the same condition that the values at i are greater than the values at i minus 1, we know that if we swap 3 and 2, we're still going to have a strictly increasing uh, sequence. 
Um, and so what we're going to do here is then we're going to potentially floor uh, the values at our, ind our current index, index uh, 1, uh, to be lower. For no swap, we're going to look at our swap at i minus 1 and just set that uh, equal to this value if it is lower. So we're going to take the minimum of uh, the current value and the swap at uh, i minus 1. And the reason is because if we know we are able to perform a swap, we can just look at this value and if it's less than, set it to that. And for swap, we're going to look at the value at no swap uh, for i minus 1 and then add 1 to it because uh, we can just take this up to this point. We haven't done any swaps. Uh, we didn't do a swap at i minus 1 and we just add one swap to it. Uh, so 0 is less than 1 so we're not doing anything here but 0 plus 1 is going to be less than 2 so we're going to floor this to 1. So let's take a look and do the same thing for these two numbers. So once again uh, we set these equal to a large number. Here we're just setting it to the length of the array. We compare 5 with 3 and 3 with 2 and so the values at i are greater than the values at i minus 1. So once again we set for no swap our current value equal to the previous value which is 0 and for swap we're going to set this equal to the previous value plus 1 in order for those two swaps to cancel out. Then we do a comparison. Uh, 5 is greater than 2 but 3 is not greater than 3 so we're not going to do the flooring at this stage. So then we move to uh, 5 and 4 and 3 and 7. Once again initializing these values to n which is the length of our array. Uh, 7 is greater than 3 but 4 is not greater than 5 so we're not going to do the initial setting uh, you know from uh, no swap to be equal to the previous value and swap to be equal to the previous value plus 1. Uh, but when we compare these we are going to see that 7 is greater than 5 and 4 is greater than 3. So uh, here we are going to to set uh, this value to be the minimum of its current value and the swap at i minus 1. So this will get floored to 2. And for no swap, uh, we're going to set this to be equal to uh, the minimum of its current value, which was 4, and uh, the value at no swap i minus 1 uh, plus 1, which will be 0 plus 1. Uh, and so at this point, we finished uh, filling no swap and swap, and so we're just going to take the minimum of the last two values, which will be 1. So let's take a look at our code. So here we have a function uh, that takes uh, as uh, two parameters uh, the vectors a and b. We're going to initialize n to be uh, the size of our vectors. And we're going to declare our two vectors no swap and swap. So I'm just calling them x and y so that they have the same length so that we can read the code a little bit better. Um, and note that x is the number of swaps needed up to i if there's no swap at i and y is the number of swaps needed up to i if we do have a swap at i. So this is your swap and x is your no swap. Uh, and then we're going to loop through starting at 1 and note that we initialize the whole array for x equal to be 0 and y equal to be 1. Technically you don't need to do this, you could uh, just set the first uh, elements, the ones at index 0, but you know this is a little bit uh, cleaner. And then we come into our loop and we're starting at 1 and we're going to go uh, n steps and um, or n minus one steps technically and so uh, we're initializing the values in swap and no swap equal to n once again I said we could sort of set this to just a, a large integer the maximum if you wanted to but n will work and then here are two steps so the if the elements are in order without a swap uh, we check that by comparing the values at i and i minus 1 for the uh, corresponding array, so a with a and b with b. And if that's the case, we just set uh, for x our, our no swap array to be the previous value and for y our swap array to be the previous value plus 1. And then we do we potentially do our flooring. Uh, so if the elements are in order with a swap, we do the same comparison, but instead of comparing a with a, we compare a with b. And if that's the case, we're flooring uh, our swap to be, uh, or our, new, our no swap array, array x to be uh, the minimum of its current value and the value of our swap array at i minus 1. And for our swap array, we're setting it to be equal to the minimum of its current value and the value of uh, no swap at i minus 1 plus that extra swap. And once we finish this, we just take the minimum of our values in the last uh, spot in our arrays, x and y, and we return that. And the time complexity of this is going to be uh, linear as we're just doing one loop over uh, A and B. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. 
All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.